Hey, what is up, Surgeaholic Sooner Nation? Welcome back to the Sooner Surge Double Trouble, the nightly, nightly entertainment, fun, facts, fiction, whatever you want to call it on here. We do have fun, though, every night. Thanks for being on here. Sooner Softball gets the win tonight, Jay. In run rule fashion, eight to nothing uh, with three bombs. Sydney Sanders closing it out. Three run bomb. Yeah, I think a lot of people expected a run roll tonight from Oklahoma, and they got it. M Maxwell pitched another gym, uh, which is not surprising either. Uh, she's been pitching really well. So, I and I, I don't know. I'm just going to say that right now, until they play another top five school, maybe OSU, I I think if they're not scoring a lot of runs and pitching good, I think a lot of people will be disappointed, right? I mean, when's their next true, like, would you say – Big test. Is it OSU? Is it what? OSU? It has to be, Jay. That's the that's the biggest thing left on their schedule. Yeah, that's the ways down the road. So Yeah. And Jay, the fact of the matter is had OU softball today won five to nothing, Sooner fans would have been mad. And it was it was good to see Sydney and Pickering tonight. Uh, Pickering was two for three with the bomb. Sydney Sanders, two hits and a bomb. Uh, it was also nice to see three run bombs. Another another, another home game at Love's Field where they hit three home runs. I mean. Yeah, they they like hitting there, don't they? They do. Maxwell's pitching great right now. I mean, it's Maxwell's great. pitching really, really good, Jay. Tyler says Tennessee. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh not sure on that one, Tyler. What oh, as far as who their toughest game is, maybe. But that, that's not a regular season game. That would be softball. I, I think you thought we were talking about football. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, their first tough game in football is Tennessee, Jay. Yeah, correct. Absolutely. Tennessee and Norman absolutely is. That's right. I mean, it, it was good to see the Pickering. Pickering, man, she hits more opposite field home runs than anybody I've seen. She is great at going opposite way. Uh, she really is. Yep, OJ Simpson. I, I saw that news today. Yeah. Uh, hey, Jay, what, Kelly what Maxwell. Kelly what? Maxwell, one hit, five Ks, goes the distance. Great yeah. performance. Another BYU, you know, BYU softball there in Norman tonight, but sounds like BYU's basketball coach is going to Kentucky with a surprise hire. Yes. That would be. Uh, Teresa, yeah, Duke lost to Campbell, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Sooner, the Sooner softball team needs to get about four or five games in a row again where they get run rules or or uh, double digits. Yeah, who is OU's next football commit, Jeremy? You got any ideas? Man, you know me in recruiting, Jay. I, Who do you, you probably think know best? better than me? Yeah. Miss, who do you think? Uh, Hunter says one first round exit head coach to another. Nixon, possibly. Mars says that's what Mars said was Nixon. Uh, Other safety out of Arkansas. Uh, I mean, they already got Wimberly. I, I don't know. Kobe Sellers, that's a possibility, Miss. Uh, for sure. I mean, that that's a name that I. Here's the thing: is I don't know. I don't know when the commitment dates. I don't know if any of those guys have set a date yet. Otherwise, you could probably whittle it down. But, uh, Monty, I see your point about Duke, but who else are you going to put there? I mean, you Jay, got to are you there? Monty, here, here's what I would say, Monty. Everyone who votes for that, they know the OU's the best team. I just think in their mind they didn't feel like they could put them there after losing two straight. That's my guess. But yeah, they know OU's best. number one. I don't think they have put many dates out for commitments yet on any of those guys that were mentioned. Uh, not that I'm aware. Now, it doesn't mean it has. I just, like you, Jeremy, I don't I don't sit here and say that I'm a huge follower of every guy that in high school. Uh, hey, Colin says, saw we were top five team for Damian Martinez, Oregon State running back transfer. Okay, I, I think there's no chance on him coming to Oklahoma. First off, I mean, where's he going to fit, Jeremy? He, that, that's my thing. I, I don't foresee them going to get Damian Martinez. Uh, I, see him, for the, I, 
Omari and Robinson is who is coming in for the spring game, Gray God says. If they get Robinson, though, which I, I, I agree there, Gray God, but it really puts you – you got him and Wimberley. I mean, where, does that – I mean, you're, you're going to have a spot for Jonah Williams, but does that kind of put the writing on the wall, you think? No, Damian Martinez cannot play center. Hey, what about the USC guy? That, That's that, the guy that – but, yeah, I mean, the USC guy entering the portal, 6'3", good size, play center, highly recruited guy. But I'm still on, I'm still saying Hickman's going to be the guy at center if they go get someone. That's my opinion. Because he now, can play right away. What about the guy from Bama, Jay? I have heard. I have heard that OU, uh, at least, there's interest in maybe on both sides, possibly. On the Alabama Center? Brailsford? Really? I, I Where, talked to someone last week. Somebody from Alabama? Uh, yeah, and I said something like, well, OU's not going to be able to get him. And the source said, uh, don't count OU out. That's all they said. Interesting. Uh, Mark says, are we finally tampering? I, you know, I, I, the word tampering to me is shady. Okay. I, I think there's teams out there that, that I, I hate the word tampering. I just hate it. You, negative connotation, that, but it is. It's a negative connotation, but like talking to other teams and other players, that's tampering. But like Greg got said, who doesn't do that, right? It may be the simple fact of Jerem, for instance. Uh, I used to coach with this guy who's now at this school. Uh, maybe he has guys that, hey, look in the transfer. I'm going to give give him your name. I mean, I don't know, you know? Yeah, and I, I got to I gotta talk to Sooner fan because I, I was glued in on the Masters. I'm not a DeChambeau fan at all. I don't, I don't really like, like it at all. But, yeah, Ricky Fowler was horrible. Listen, it's Scotty Scheffler's tournament to lose. The guy the guy can shoot 68 there in his sleep. And Tiger, in my opinion, is better better than I thought he would be already. His swing looks great. His well, short game is phenomenal. If he can get in the clubhouse of three under through his first 18, do not count Tiger out of this thing. He, will, he did look like he was moving a little bit better. But tomorrow he's we'll got see, 23 he's holes, though. He's got to play 23 holes tomorrow. And listen, here's the thing about DeShambo. He's from the Live Golf Tour. They only play. Did you hear Wyndham Clark after the tournament, after their first round? No. He kind of threw a little jab at DeShambo. I thought I, I liked it. He goes, Those guys on Live Golf used to play at 54. This is a 72 hole event. Yeah. And I thought it was That's pretty true. good. I liked it. I liked it. I like the guys from the PGA Tour that kind of bash the live guys. I do. I'm all for it. Uh, yeah, I'm a PGA Tour guy. Uh, big shout out to Abby. Abby uh, for Jay Johnson here. Abby's birthday tomorrow and Level 10 Regionals. Is that in? Uh, what sport is Level 10 Regionals? Is that track and field? Level Could 10 Regionals. Gymnastics. Probably gymnastics. You're right. Hey, happy birthday. Abby, that's awesome. That's awesome. Good luck Go at dominate. regionals. Go dominate. Uh, I here's what I say about live. Live, people did it for the money. I I'm I'm with you. I think the beef is hilarious, and I'm all for it. I would love to see a PGA versus live tournament. Oh, that would that ratings would be unreal, Chief. I I'm disagree, my Chief. Point. I disagree with you on this. I mean, they have Kepka and Rom, yes, but PGA Tours is where it's at. I'm sorry. I would rather watch golf than Major League Baseball on television if Tiger's playing. Well, Tiger's is sell factor for me. Depends on the tournament. Correct. Major championships, I'm all over. Yeah. And my Royals, my Royals, Jay, on Not fire. Seven. Right now. Seven in a row, baby. They're hot, aren't they? Watch out for the Royals. 1.59 ERA starters leading Major League Baseball. So I'm talking. Jay, about. we're nine days away from spring game. 
Yes, nine games away. Uh, and the stuff I've seen personally on video from David Stone, the guy looks like a monster. I, he's he's bigger. He looks bigger than I thought he'd be by now. Just and he's he's going to dominate. Jay. He's going to dominate guys up front. I think what. Two ninety two ninety six. Yeah, he'll be at three hundred though before fall. Uh, yeah, you right. you remember two weeks ago when everyone was when these guys are too small. What did I say? I don't care about their weight in March. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Just saying. We're getting on well, a golf talk. It looks like Sooner fans. Yeah, says, see, DJ's, those three aren't those three aren't superior right now. Yeah, DJ's been DJ has been great lately. Besides George Brett, my favorite Royal, I love Frank White. Uh, I love Willie Sweeney. Wilson. My, Willie Wilson, but Mike Sweeney was one of my, my favorite Sweeney. Royal. And and to me, my favorite, I loved Eric Hosmer. He loved Hos. Oh, Hosmer, Mustakas, Lorenzo Cain. Wade Salve. Davis, Kelvin Salve. Herrera. That team was so good. Salve. All right, this is a great question, Gray God. Great question. What teams do y'all see realistically losing to? Ole Miss is the one I'm saying. I think as a whole, we are more talented than the rest of the schedule outside maybe Texas. Uh, here's my real, realistic of games OU could lose. I think there's – Ole Miss – say could lose. Yeah, because I think – when I say the floor is eight and four and the ceiling's ten and two, those four teams would would be Ole Miss, uh, LSU, Missouri, and Texas, Texas. I mean, you could throw Bama in there too for the fifth. But in other words, win one of those four, you're eight and three. No, I mean you got to throw Bama in there too. I just Bama's at home. You got to win that game. Period. Ron, period. I've got to. I've got to just look. First, I'll start by saying I love that you're on here every single night. Love it. Uh, I, I got to disagree with this, though, Rod. They aren't as hungry. Like, uh, what? in what way are they not as hungry? Because everything I've heard post-games, everything I've heard out of their mouths is they are hungry as ever. You can't equate the fact that they lost two games to not being hungry. I, I just don't think you can do that. I agree, Jay Johnson. Auburn, I agree. That's going to be true. With There's here's what I'll say. Well, hey, here's there it here's is. what I'll say. That what Ron said is, I know this didn't happen, but go back. If if they score a couple more runs and they beat Sweet Texas because they lost both games by one run, if they end up winning all those, right now everybody's saying they're better than last year. So I do think that part of it's a fine line. Uh, what's up, Josh? How are you tonight? Uh, Who's our top two leading rushers and receivers? Okay, I'm going to go first. Top two rushers. I think it's going to be Sawchuck and Hicks. Uh, top two receivers. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go Burks and Gibson. Yardage. I'm, I'm going to go a little bit close different. Guy, close is going to be Bauer Sharp. What? I'm, I'm going a little different than you. I'm going to say. Uh, it's Saul, Chuck, and Barnes, actually. And I'm going to go with DJ and uh, Anderson. Uh, and, and Jay, I, Sooner Cowboy, this comment of they don't have all the home run hitters, they have more homers this year than last year. Their power is better this year than last year, so that's not a true statement. You know, it's kind of like, I, I'm going to throw a scenario out there, talking about football and softball. Jeff Levy. Great offense. Situationally, they had some issues. I think that's been the issue this year. Situationally, in certain games, they go cold, and they don't get many runs. I think that's that's it. That's all you can equate it to right now. While I'm not going to say 12 and 0, I don't think that happens in the SEC. I, I think six and six and 12 and 0 are about equal. They're, neither one's happening. Okay. I would agree with that, Jerm. I'd agree with that. If you're gonna say twelve and zero is far fetched, you got to say six and six is absolutely far fetched too. Gre Eric's got Ole Miss, Alabama, LSU, Texas, four losses. I don't think they lose to Alabama at home. I can get on board maybe the other three, and that's why I think they're going to be nine and three.
Yeah, I would I rather have. I would. Ha I'd rather have more home runs and spread out over more people than one home run hitter. So, Donnie says if they can beat Tennessee and Auburn early, he thinks they have a good year. And I think those two games early are a part of, partly a key to this team's success. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I'd agree. You got to beat a Tennessee. If you don't beat Tennessee at home, it's going to be a long. Is it? Year. Is it Tennessee and then at Auburn? Yes, it's Tennessee, South Carolina, and then Auburn. Don't forget, they have five home games to open up the year, I believe. Yeah, you you got to beat Auburn. You got to get to six and OJ. Isn't that crazy? Five home games to start the year. Am I wrong on that? Let Let me ask. I want to ask Eric this: What if they get through Auburn unscathed those first six games? Is the record still going to be ten and four? It's four home games. Uh, four home games. So I thought it was curious. I thought it was three non-con and then Tennessee, South Carolina. Am I wrong? I I can't remember. It's not wild if we can utter a loss to Texas. Look, I'm going to pick OU because I always pick OU. I'm just saying that's a team that is really really good this year. That could be a a difficult one. No, Mark. I, Mark, I said nine and three. Hey, Jay Johnson, she was very upset, it sounded like to me. She she thought they kind of cruised, like you said. Blake brings up a point that are we gonna be able to win game seven? That's to hey Blake, that's that's a one of the best that's a great comment and a great point. And that's been the struggle at Oklahoma for the last two years under Brent Venables. They've lost a lot of close games. I mean Jay, name one game, game name one win. Game. Other than Texas with Davis Bevel, name a game they just got destroyed in. I'd say TCU and Dylan Gabriel went down. Right? Okay. Okay, but what I was saying is not many teams in college football win, win games scoring under 20. Doesn't happen. Okay, I see it there, Hunter. I thought South Carolina was up earlier. I messed Those up. days are over. They're gone. They're bye-bye. Uh, Josh says, Exactly, think, Mark. If OU only scores 17, even if they win, people are going to be going, going crazy about OU's offense, how bad it is. No one wins holding teams under – no one wins scoring 17 or less. It, it doesn't happen in college football, guys. Josh says, I think the biggest thing we aren't talking about enough is playing more complimentary ball. We can't throw a D out there with two to four clock time rest. I agree. The three and outs, the quick drives, and – they got to help each other out in, in key situations. Like last year, I go back to this last year, the Kansas game. Twice, OU defense have got turnovers near the end of that game. Twice. All it took, I don't know why I got balloons going up. All it you took, too. all it took was Oklahoma to get a couple first downs or do something, and they couldn't do it. So, uh, it, that's complimentary. You got you got a little bit of both in right times. We did have a game we only scored 20. I'm saying it doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen that often in college football with good teams. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Chief thinks offense is going to have growing pains, but steadily improve. The defense and BB's third year will be superb, allows to win close games. 10 to 2 is the floor. Ooh, 10 to 2 in the floor? That's the floor. I think that's mm. the ceiling. 10-2 with this schedule would be an outstanding – I mean, that would be an amazing year, right? 10-2, yeah. you're guaranteed in the playoffs, so. Oh, yeah, 100%. 9-3, I think, is in the playoffs. It's, it'll be eight close. 8-4 is before. not. 8-4 and four does not get you yeah, in at no all. No chance. No chance at 8-4. No chance. No chance. Agree with that, Jay. Do you think it matters as much – do you think it matters as much now with the 12-team playoffs? When you lose, like it used to. Used to, you could lose early. Now, are you better off losing late because you're already so highly ranked? You get all the way up to one or two and then lose. You have farther to fall. What do you think about that? I, I, I don't know. Does it matter as much? Until I see this year and how it plays out. Yeah, it's I mean, still going to matter some, Jay. Yeah, it's still going to. It's going to matter more, I think, who you lose to. That that's that's, that's going to be a big deal, Jay. It's going to be a big deal in the rankings. 
Oh, it can't I, be out of conference, especially with OU's non-con. You can't. No, you, you can't lose, lose a non-con or you're toast. Done. Done. Unless you're playing a really good non-con team like Michigan or something like that, that's different. But you go lay an egg and lose to Tulane, it's not good. Hey, uh, if OU lose to Texas, Bama, and LSU, I think they're in the playoff. If that's their three losses. Yeah, because you would beat Ole Miss and Missouri, which in Tennessee, those three teams are all vying for spots. So I think I think that's a good point. Yeah. And, and Eric, Eric, Eric I agree. Here. Eric, I need to see teams. I need to see us beat the teams that we're supposed to beat too. That's been the Achilles heel. Beat yeah, the man. teams you're better than. That's Mess. the problem went, at OU lately. Mess, he went back to USC. Yes. He went he in the portal. He went in the portal, got paid, went back to USC. Do you think there's any chance this USC center is doing the same thing? It could be. Maybe he saw that he got paid. He's going to try to get paid too. Uh, Jay, and, and I agree with Tone Loke. I don't think Levy was – this team was a top five offense in America, so let's not argue about that. Uh, I agree with Tone Look, but Jay, the That's last what, two years un, under B uh, under uh, BV, I said BS under BV. One, they beat Nebraska two years ago. Everyone said, "Ah, crown them." Last year they beat Texas. Ah, crown them. They couldn't beat the team they should have beat. That's the problem. Yeah, I agree. Jeremy, everybody on this chat. Last year, including me, anybody that's on this, I promise you, when they went and beat Texas, everybody said, playoff, who are they going to lose to? Look at their schedule. Yeah. Right? Yep. Hey, Tyler. Tyler, OU off, OU's offense against Kansas, first first play out of the shoot was a pick six, okay? That's not Levy. Uh, Levy some, had a uh, – Jeremy Levy's game against yeah. There were some questionable play calls no, in that game. It Absolutely. was awful. Dylan, you, you I, I said that, Jay. The, the Kansas game was it was awful, period, in the discussion. And, and exactly, Eric. Who cares? The offense, doesn't matter who's calling plays, they should have dominated Kansas. Jeremy, Jeremy, you're playing Kansas and you throw the ball nine times. That's on your OC. There was also a lot of zone reads that I don't know what DG was doing in that game. You don't need a zone raid to have a guy go for a deep ball. Just throw it. I mean, uh, yeah, you do. You pull it out and you throw it and he handed it off. Go watch it. I don't want to sit here and talk about OU Kansas football when OU should have destroyed them. Yeah, I agree, Jerem. And I I'm going to say it again. Here's what I can argue, Tyler. OU would have beat both of them with Jackson Arnold last year. I can argue that. Oh, my gosh. I I can argue that if I want, Jay. You're you're ridiculous. Tell me in those two games, Jay, what Jeremy, Dylan and Gabriel did that Arnold could have done. But Arnold, they might Levy might not even throw the ball at all with Arnold. No one Levy. Mm, there's a fax. All I'm saying is you, you won't throw any blame on Levy. It just it cracks me up. I, I don't. I just it. said Levy's cold. No, you don't. It's all Jake. Dylan Gable. Dylan Gable's the worst quarterback in the history of football. Le For God, the fact, Jay, the fact that OU was a top five offense with him at quarterback it is a testament to Jeff Levy. I agree. Levy did some good things, and he made Gable top look good. five I'm offense. Not, he not the reason he lost. But I can also say with my mouth, I can say that Levy also had bad games. You can't really say that. So, moving on. Game. Moving on. That's right, Gray God. Didn't they? That's right. Uh, so. He didn't have a job in waiting, Tyler. He did not have a job in waiting. Hey, let's get to trivia tonight. Trivia sponsored by the Fan Stop. Check out fanstop.com. Use code SURGE. You'll get 10% off your first three months. Go check it out. That The May shirt looks awesome. You'll want to be signed up by then. So sign up by April 20th to get your May shirt. Fanstop.com. Code SURGE. Here we go. This one was a shock to me, guys. This question I'm getting ready to ask you. Uh, since 1967, 
Which college football team has the most number one overall picks? Which college football team has the num most number one overall picks since 1967? There it Boom. is, Tone Loke. Quick, quick. Tone you see, they really probably quick. all saw it today. Uh, Tone Loke got it. Five. OU with four right behind them. I was hey. kind of surprised. I, But they had a lot early on. That's the thing. Hey, John, I didn't know. And look, you can fill me in. I didn't know GG was hurt all last year. Uh, I, so if I didn't know, I just didn't know that. And Eric, I said Jeff Levy highly questionable in a lot of the areas. I said it. Some bad play calls. And you know I've been critical of DG, but I, I've criticized Levy as well. And to say that it's some kind of soft argument, I don't know what you're referring to, but uh, I, I don't know. My, my opinion is I think OU would have lost to Texas with Jackson Arnold last year, and they would have beat Ohio State and Kansas. I, I mean, OSU and Kansas. I don't think that's a bad take, actually, that they would have lost to Texas, but they would have beat OSU and Kansas. I don't think that's a horrible take. I don't think it's a bad argument. It's not a bad argument, but I do think I do think you do have to put some of it on Levy on the King. The Oklahoma State game, I'm not putting on Levy. I think DG didn't play well against OSU. I, I agree. I'm not, but the Kansas game, I'm totally putting that on Levy. You can't throw the ball six times in the second half. Expect to win. That's on hey, Levy. Maybe he does, Eric. Maybe he does. I don't think he's going to have ten picks. How many Gabriel have? Seven or six? How many interceptions did Gabriel have last year? I think it was six. Uh, he had more than six. I thought he had more than that. Matt says Levy thought Stoops was Sterling Shepard. They do to him a lot. I I didn't know DG got hurt after the Texas game, Jay. What are you talking about? If DG was hurt and they played him, I have a bigger problem about last year now. Ron, Ron – is partially right on that. Kansas won at the line of scrimmage. I, I do think that OU's offensive line that game, here's the thing. I don't care what game it is, who you're playing. OU was not good enough up front just to be able to run the ball on people all the game. And that without throwing the ball, you're one-dimensional. You're not going to blow people. They're, they weren't good enough in the trenches to do that. They just weren't. That's a fact. Hey, Chief, thanks for the super, 499 Chief. super, Chief. Appreciate you. When we get to the playoffs, who I like that mindset. Who would you rather beat, Oregon and DG, USC and you know who, or OK State? Look, first man, off, first off. I'd rather beat Oregon. I would rather beat Oregon first, second round beat OSU, and in the championship beat USC, okay? Well, the first one on my list would be USC and Tebow. That's the first one that I'd want to play. I'd want all part of him to get – just dominated, okay? The second one would be uh, probably Oregon. I just – I hate playing OSU, period. I just hate it because it's a no-win situation with OSU. Yeah, USC all day long. Give them to me, please. The build-up for Tebow. The Dylan Gabriel, Jeremy, nobody, nobody other than you and other fans, like nobody from OU is against Dylan Gabriel. Like they are Tebow. I mean, Tebow is a, yeah, Tebow is like a hated guy. Gabriel, Against Dylan not. Gabriel? I, you can't compare the two. Who said I hated Dylan Gabriel? Here we go again. Oh, I mean, but you just said you, that's who you would play first. You'd like to beat first. You just said Oregon first. Yeah, Oregon in round one, take care of them. Second round OSU and move on to the championship against Riley. It was one game, I thought. Oh, I, I was saying in the playoffs. Sorry. Yeah, if there's one game, it's USC. Absolutely, Jay. Hey, that game right there. Hey, that game, OU versus USC might even beat the women's national championship in basketball this year. It might. Possibly. Jackson Arnold is 3,000 to 1 Heisman odds. I will take that one. OU over seven and a half wins, easy money, six and two in SEC, 10 and two. Yeah. 
John, I agree. The seven, I mean, I think eight wins. The crazy number is it used to be six and a half. Yards. Give me the yard as Jackson Arnold throws to this year. How many, what's the over under? I would be disappointed if he's not 3,500 at least. So is that the over under? Is that where you put it? 4,000? I would probably put the over under at 3,500. And I would take the over. What is that per game? How many is that per game? 300? Do the math. 3,500 divided by 12. That's about 300 because 3,600 would be 300. Eric's taking the under. I, would I take think he over. throws for he'll throw for three hundred a game, Jay. Unless I, I they just the over on that. I take unless the they just milk the ball running it. I take the over. Let's hey, so. let's not forget, uh, Seth Latrell does run the air raid. They're not going to throw the ball twenty times a game. It's going to be more like thirty, well, thirty-five. To the Arizona game, he threw it for fifty. Correct. Two ninety-one a game is. 3,500, and I take the over because there's going to be a game he throws for 400. Yeah. There's probably not going to be any games he throws for less than two. Yeah, Mark says we're setting it too low there. I think you'd have to set it about 4,000. Setting it too low, there's people taking the under, Jay. So I don't think it's too low. What about Chief T-Bird's comment? Stats will go down because the SEC is better than the Big 12. Okay, and then I want to get to Michael here. Jay, hey, I, I understand at the top it's better, but I am so tired of hearing people. Kansas State, why, why they may not be some world beater, uh, Kleinman knows how to coach. They had OU's hey. number. I think OU's happy to get away hey. from a team like that Don't and go forget. play at South Carolina, I promise you. Hey, remember when the SEC Mike was on here on the show? He said yes. that defenses aren't what they used to be. Everyone talks about SEC defense. It hasn't been great the last few years. He said that. I mean, you got your really good teams, but then do you not remember the Ole Miss LSU game last year in the 50s? If that would have been Big 12, they would all been laughing at it. Laughing at it. Okay? Yeah, Trap House. Laughing at it. Trap also, House says the, other the one vaunted, is, van, I, I vaunted think Missouri, defense. I think Missouri and LSU last year was hey, right up there okay. too. So, Jay, if, if Michael Hammond's numbers are accurate, and I want to hear from Eric and a few others, Hunter's one, I want to hear on this. If that's his numbers, is that a good season? Hunter said yes. And, and I don't think Hunter thinks he's going to have those numbers. There's a lot of people who think he won't have as good a season as DG last year. Now, Maybe his interceptions are up a few, but it depends on game situation. If he makes more winning plays, I don't really care if the interceptions are up a little bit, if there's more winning plays. Eric, I'm what I said, Eric. I'm not a, I am not a stats guy as much as I am a win guy. I, I could really, like, I mean, it, it's just like the, the defense. I mean, I don't care if the defense – uh, has as many tackles for loss as long as they're winning, making winning plays in key situations. I mean, yeah. Hey, Tyler, I think Woody Washington did okay on that guy. Uh, Woody Washington's kind of been, it's been quiet to talk about Woody Washington lately. It's been very quiet. I mean, that guy's a senior leader, been there forever. Minimum 4,200 yards is crazy. I think 4,000 is very doable. Uh, John, uh, Big 12 offenses were better than SEC. Defense is not so much. Uncle Charlie says, is Texas on the same side of the SEC as Oklahoma? No, their schedule's different. So they don't have sides anymore. Schedule's different. So Hey, didn't DG throw for like 3,800 and ran for 300, though? I don't think he threw for 4,200, did he? Yeah, some – I mean, Woody Washington got people to shut down top wide receiver this year. D is going to play lights out. Or I think we have multiple people to shut down top receivers. Someone drop in DG stats. I was thinking he ran for like 300 of his yards. Well, he had – the, the Texas game, I think he had – a. 100 yards, didn't he? Close to it. Not more. Hey, and I'll say this, Jay. If, if, if 
if Jackson Arnold throws for those numbers and it's a little bit less than DG, people better be super happy because it's the SEC and everyone keeps talking about how great the SEC is. So, Josh, are you talking football coach? Who's the next OU coach that leaves, either getting promoted or fired? Are you talking all coaches in general? I think he's talking about who's the next head coach if BV doesn't pan out. Well, I, maybe coaches leaving OU. I mean, I don't know. I'm confused on what, what you're asking, Josh. Sorry. Oh, maybe or Porter Moser's the next guy out of as a coach. Michael, Eric, Michael. So I, my, my question is, Jay, I, I think it's crazy that people don't think Arnold's going to throw for more than 3,600 yards. I think that's pretty crazy. Uh, I would say next coach to be promoted out of there, go somewhere, would be a guy like Jay Valai. That that would be my guess. Jackson, that's a horrible take, in my opinion. Horrible. What is it? Hawkins say? is two, Hawkins is two years away from playing, so obviously, uh, hey, there's Heisman talk. Arnold would be before. Here's the deal. Here's what here's what I'll say. If Michael Hawkins gets a Heisman before Jackson Arnold, then Jackson Arnold didn't live up to the hype. Because he basically got replaced, in my opinion. Well, Eric brings up a good point about the line, too. We'll, we'll have to see what the line's like this year. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, that's and a big he part may of the have to really be a, a scrambler. Big part of the quarterback, Jaron. Yep. Absolutely is. Absolutely is. I don't think Woody. I don't think they went to Woody Washington and said, "Hey, we're going to move you because you're not good enough." I no, think it was he, a mutual. I think it was a mutual conversation between both both parties. Well, he wanted to try inside more. He wanted to do some things, probably to help his pro uh, draft stock. I mean, a lot of people didn't throw his way, Jay. He, and that's the thing: if you're an NFL guy looking at on tape, what, you're not going to see a whole lot of like ball plays. I mean, when they threw at him, it was either way overthrown. He didn't really have plays where he made plays on the ball. So I think that's probably why he wants to also move inside to get more more opportunity for film for NFL and stuff. Correct. Yes. Plenty of tape of him getting burned. There, there is some tape of him getting burned, yes. I, I'm not going to be one who says Woody Washington had a horrible year last year because I don't buy that. I don't buy that at all. I, I, I think Woody Washington. When he I, says he's the I best. think Woody Washington was good. I think he was good enough. Here's what I would say about Woody Washington. You're right, Jay. He doesn't make these wow plays. He's one that isn't on the highlight reel all the time. Uh, he's improved his tackling a little bit. His man coverage is okay. He's made a few plays on the ball. Is he absolutely elite? No. Size Here's the deal, Jer have a super Jer high. Jer Gentry Williams, when he's healthy, Gentry, and this is a fact, Gentry Williams, when he was healthy, made plays that you were like, oh, wow, but there's Gentry. There's Gentry. Oh, interception, fumble recovery, whatever. You cannot say that about what you just didn't see anything. But do you know one reason you can't, Jay? Why? They didn't throw his way much. They picked on the other side. They did not throw Woody Washington's not, way I'm very often. About, I'm talking about like Gentry come up there and break up that wide receiver screen in heartbeat. I'm saying just overall plays, right? I mean, Gentry was making a ton of plays, dude. Gentry was. Josiah Wagner can make plays. But there is a worry about Gentry Williams being able to stay healthy. That's part of it. I agree with that. I agree with that. I mean, that's some a, that's guys a just can't. There's a legitimate concern. Is there any chance Jacoby Johnson makes that next step in his big time addition this year? Any chance, or do you think it's Des Malone's to lose over there? Des Malone, Jay, it sounds like has been really good. I just think Jacoby Johnson's physicality. And what he brings to the table could be unbelievable for this team. Hey, Jay, let me say this. Unbelievable. He might me, be the best physical specimen that they've had on defensive back, I think, in some time. 
You want me to say what I've said all off season? What's that? I want to see six to eight guys on. on why? Uh, again, why does OU and not just OU? A lot of teams. Why don't you rotate in DBs to give they the don't. wait to give the receivers a different look? Bring in a physical guy. Bring in more of a, a speedster. You can switch it up. You can't always throw the same guy at a corner. I, well, I. I do think last year at the beginning of the year they were doing that. I mean, go go back and watch uh, uh, Seatbelt. Seatbelt Vickers was getting some pretty good run until he got injured. So uh, that's right, Trap House. Keep him fresh. Hey, Jeremy, I, I know we, we didn't that's play That's what I college. just said, and you disagreed with me. No, I didn't. I didn't disagree with uh, you. Sounded like it. No. No, listen. I said they played a lot of them. Look at Vickers last year. Uh what I was going to say is we didn't play college ball, but anybody that plays flag football, whatever you play, if you're playing defensive back and you're covering, if you're covering a guy 40 yards down the field and you have to go do it again, it's, it's, it's not easy and you cannot, it's hard to be at your top notch without fresh legs at defensive back. It's just hard. Jay, but the other thing that I don't think people think about is you can get film on these DBs. You can look at tendencies when you're switching it up. A swim move may not work on someone. Someone may be more of a bumper. And it, it, to me, you've got to throw different looks at receivers. you got to keep bringing different things. If, if, like, if they're playing, if they're all talented, if they're, if they're good enough, though. That, that's exactly. I, I'm exactly. totally fine rotating guys if they're good enough. But the last thing I want to see is pulling Gentry out and putting somebody in who gets cooked. I mean, that's obvious. Well, Des Malone, we know is good enough. I think, can I walk her? Uh, showed he can be in there in spurts. Vickers is pretty good. I mean, uh, I think Vickers Jacoby, could. Kobe, Josiah Wagner, uh, the other guys. That start, I mean, and, and you're right, Sooner Cowboy. Great. The better point. the D line, the better the secondary is going to look. And, but hey, play them all, move them in. Here's the deal about defensive line. As a defensive back, if you know your guys are going to get pressured, you can be a lot more aggressive because you know. You, they won't have much time to throw. You can jump routes. You can do a lot of different things. And for whatever reason, uh, I'm going to bring up what trap. It does sound like Jalen Rowe is healthy now. He's at least fully healthy. But, yeah, still not going to seem like he's going to get any run. But, Jay, go back in the years past at OU. Guys like Justin Broyles. Uh, other guys. Josh Eaton, right? I mean, there's guys who would. Well, Eaton was one you thought might get some run. He really never panned out. But, Jay, some of these guys got beat, 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 and never got subbed out. Uh, that that cannot happen. Yeah. With I the mean, guys that got in this locker room, if you get beat, you go out. You learn a lesson. Like, come on. this That's got to happen right now. Yeah. I would agree. I mean, uh, somebody asked about Desan McCall. I you know, I've watched some of the 2000 and early 2000s Oklahoma teams at linebacker. The the linebackers everybody raved about. Guys like Rocky Calmus, Torrance Marshall. We could go Teddy Lehman. A lot of guys. And I think the biggest complaint people have had about the linebackers, uh, sometimes like Canik, it would be the coverage, right? They're just not in coverage. But a lot of the things last year with Canik, I've rewatched some of it this year. And it's not just Canik, it's other guys. When they didn't make the plays on the passing game, they were literally two steps away. It, it's just like they're just they're just weren't quite in the right position. That can be better this year, and and, and th that to me go makes your defense going from good to great at linebacker. Is when you're starting to have lockdown coverage in the zones and everything, and I think it can get a lot better. And I, maybe McCullough. I don't know who it's going to be though. That's the thing. Other than Danny, we know Danny's locked, locked, locked and loaded. Who is it going to be? Who's going to be his riding partner, man? Well, be well, it also sounds like Zach Alley's going to play a little more man, and I'm all for it. 5'9 uh, scares me, Gray God says. I think Eli Bowen is a year away. God, I don't think Eli Bowen's getting in the secondary play time, but I think he might possibly get on special hey, teams every now and then. You know who's been very quiet this offseason? Peyton Bowen. Peyton Bowen has been, absolutely. His, name, his name's been quiet. Well, guys, I've been a little quiet. Maybe I'm getting back to my normal self here, but thanks for being on here. It, it was great as always, chatting up spring ball, chatting up softball, a little Not Masters next. talk.
Nine little days. masters talking here as well. But uh, Chief T Bird, big time appreciation for the uh, for the super tonight. Thanks, Chief. Uh, all others who are on here, as always, thanks so much for the conversation. We will be back again tomorrow night, nine thirty. One day closer to the spring game. Hope to see you all there uh, in the spring game. And we'll be there and hope to see you guys there. We'll see you tomorrow night. Boomer. Sooner.